So I had to trust that God knows and God is in the detail. And it's amazing because my child grew normal. You know, the, the kicks, the turns, the hiccups. You've, we've been waiting, we've been praying, you've blessed us with this son. Like, you know those ones, the song, I, um, you give and take away. I'm thinking, you give now and you, so what, what, where will this end? But I always had hope and faith that my son will make it. And in fact, now I changed my prayer to, you know what, God? you will heal this little guy. Hi everyone, my name is Reverend Karo Kiyama and these are Thoughts of a Shaken Pastor Season 3. In this season we are talking about going through hard knocks. One of the things that has really bothered me is that there are a lot of people lately who have been walking out of faith, reconstructing, as they call it. People who have known the Lord, have served the Lord for many years, and then they turn around and they denounce that which they believed in vehemently. And that makes me pause and just ask myself, what are some of the things that they could have experienced that would make them feel that this faith is not able to hold them? And as we did our research, we came across people who have gone through extraordinary circumstances, very, very painful things, and yet they have been able to hold on to faith. And so today it gives me an extreme pleasure to introduce Frida, my friend, as she shares with us her journey. Because I was like, what did you say? So I told him, no, 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 we are here to try and get a heartbeat. And now by then, of course, my husband had known what has happened like. Ah, uh, there's no heartbeat. And I was wondering, where has the heartbeat gone? You know? And uh, he said, in fact, these were his words. So I said, what exactly is the problem? What could be the problem? And he's like, let me do, of course, a report. He's just a radi radiologist for crying out loud. He's not a doctor. But I think he had a cardiac arrest. Oh my God. I, I laughed. You know, laughing the sorts of in pain, in shock, you're like, are you kidding me? I was like, I do want to repeat because uh, I think that really hit me because my dad had just passed away four months ago and because of his death was a cardiac arrest. I'm like, hmm, this child didn't even want to see this other side of the world. You anyway, get cardiac arrest before I don't care. And it's at that point everything in me crashed. In fact, I try and tell people it's a pain. I don't, it's, it, you can't even describe it because it has a numb effect. It has a, you know. So as I sat there, I was like, okay. So my doctor who was on call with my husband was like, have you given him a name? I was like, yeah, we, we had a name. So after a few, no, I said, okay. So the next thing is, then remove the dead baby. I mean, if he, if he didn't make it, he didn't make it. Mm. Now, <laughs> my doctor told me, you have to go home and relax. I'm like, home and relax? Like, yeah. Let me see you at 5 p.m. This was around uh, going to midday. So I text, I called this lady again and I told her, I just told her my baby has died and I cut the phone. In fact, I cut and I switched it off. And now thinking about it, I didn't even think about her because she was also pregnant. We were almost <laughs> the same time. So later on I was thinking, oh my God, that must have really hit her hard. And uh, I'm glad she came and she found, <laughs> she went to tell me, I'm going to look for the pastors. I'm like, I just cut the phone and I switched off. And, and went for the birthday. Exactly, I had a birthday in the afternoon. So I had to compose myself. So as I was leaving, um, I first went to the washroom. You know those tears that just come out, you're wondering, am I crying? By the I was still in shock. I took God would come this far, man. I didn't want to think about God at that particular moment. God is so wonderful that even when you don't know, He carries you. 
in the wings of his love. There's a way he shields you. There's a way he literally takes the pain from you. That's why you feel yourself, you're, you're, you're kind of numb. You're, in fact, I think you go through and come. It's like nothing is happening. But you see, God is not making you feel this pain because he carries it for you. I, then, then I remember this thing I used to read about the footsteps. Footsteps in the sand. And when this guy asked, where were you, Lord? He said, because I saw one set of footsteps. He said, it's at that time that I carried you. It's at this time that God carried me. From that point, when I was told my son was normal, I, I, I stopped thinking. I realized that the line between sanity and insanity is very thin. Because honestly, I, I would have flipped. I would have flipped. So here I am in hospital living. I go, I cry, and then I remember <clears throat> two faces waiting to see me. Of course, their dad didn't tell them anything. Now my husband, I think he was shocked. He, he has never spoken about it. it. It's like it hit him and hit him so hard that he didn't even know what to tell these kids. So I come out, I look at him, I tell him, take me home. He's like, no, why? We have a birthday. I'm like, exactly, I'm not going for the birthday. So my kids are like, mom, is everything OK? Yeah. At the time, I'm trying so hard not to cry, but they're looking at me. Is everything okay with the baby? I'm like, um, not really, but anyway, where are we going to buy the cake? And I, I have a birthday. Let's go get the cake. So I tell my husband, you go with them, take them to my mom's, because that's why we're going to cut the cake. Just let me go home and sleep. He said, no, you're not going home to be alone and sleep. But they, by, they, by this time, I'm leaving the hospital. My pressure is still I'm very, and nobody up to today has ever told me how high it was. I think I forgot to ask, but they were also worried about it. So he's like, uh, so I think the doctor had talked to my husband. I don't know, because I just wanted to come home and sleep. And he was like, no. So we went, got the cake, went to my mom's, did a birthday with a plastic smile. And at five o'clock, we went to see our doctor. And uh, I asked the doctor, where are you booking me in? Because, you know, we finished with this story today. Then from tomorrow, I wake up and she's like, you know, Frida, this can't happen today. I'm like, what? He, 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 he. Now there, I got mad. I'm like, you're aware this child is there? Oh, and my stomach wasn't. My stomach was this big. In fact, it looked like I was nine months pregnant. So I'm like, since it won't even shrink, how do I stay with her? I'm like, no, 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 I have to go to the hospital today. I didn't know you can. I have to, and Kumbe, the more I'm getting annoyed and getting all this, my BP is doing what? It's rising. And I didn't know. Mark, you have never been here. So apparently when you have high blood pressure, you actually need to rest, you know? So here I am, my emotions are everywhere. My heart rate, ha it's gonga ringuko my 120 uko, it should not pass 100. So they're like, wow. So she told me, this is the fact, Fred. Even if I wanted to touch you, I can't. This BP has to come, this is what will kill you. And now at this rate, we have to save you. And I'm like, what are you saving? You know, I mean, of course it was that. So my husband was there with me. He couldn't talk, because if even him is trying to think, it's just a way where I mean, just just relax. Now we deal with you. This we are finished here. So it took me quite a while, and uh, so I rested. And of course, she kept on monitoring. Uh, but I was um, losing a child is very pain. I tell people it's <coughs> it's so painful that you can't even draw the pain. You you, you literally can't draw the pain. You know, so... So how long did you stay with this dead child in your system? Eight days. Eight days. And for me, that was the hardest test. And uh, I know questions are why eight days. I think my doctor thought it's wise. I just go through a uh, normal labor, so I labor. <sighs> Going back, if I'm to go back there, 
I would tell them, you know what? Because after eight days, they didn't do anything different. Mm. <laughs> In fact, that day, I never even came home that day because I couldn't. I thank God for friends who took me in for the night. Because I could not. I, I'm not thinking. And that night, I never slept. The following morning, now is when I was like, okay, Frida, this has happened. Father, I choose to praise you and I rejoice in you. In fact, that's all I said. In all things, I give thanks. So, next step. Waiting, waiting. for labor. I'm like, I've never, I, I've never labored. My children have been serious. Hey, labor in Atoka. Oh, take this, take that. And a part of me, I got her point. She was like, Frida, you can't have a scan. There's no baby. True. To get an emotional scar. That's the thing. So, I hated my... In fact, this is how I used to sit. I used to walk like this because I can't even look down. Because I'm thinking, this is not me. In fact, I remember, was it on a Wednesday or Thursday? I was so frustrated. I woke up and told my husband, I'm taking a knife and I'm just cutting my stomach and throwing this thing away. You know, because, I mean, really. I know miracles happen. And, and honestly, I, I never thought that I would pray for a miracle. For me, this was done. So I remember going back to hospital on Tuesday, and of course now they, she had to check the cervix. There's an oil I was taking, I've been told to take. Oh my God, in fact, I always say, if I see that oil up to today, I can use a kuchapanai. Exactly, because it did nothing. Nothing. It is, I wish it even had a taste, you know? Oh, it did nothing. So I go in on Tuesday and she's like, um, my BP had improved. My heart rate was still up, but again, I think it's because of the emotional beats. I was trying to rest. And she's like, not yet. So I'm like, how long do I have to wait? But we will wait. We'll wait for it to come. I'm giving it up to Friday. I didn't like that. In fact, now, if I, <laughs> I wouldn't say if I would have to go back, but for me, that week was terrible. Terrible. I, I, I used to stay like this, because I'm like, this, this ain't here. But again, you walk, it's a baby. It's still heavy. <laughs> so anyway, I went up to Friday. Friday I started getting the labor pains. And then I went to hospital. By then, my sister-in-law was here. She had just flown in from the States. <laughs> so she took me to hospital. And I'm thinking, okay, the way I'm feeling, maybe we go, maybe today is the day. So pack me a bag, I go. I go there. They're like, ah, nothing. I'm like, what is nothing? But your cervix has not opened. Eh. So I still to go back home. But I told my doctor, this, I can't take it anymore. I can't. You see, it is hard enough knowing that your child is dead. Mm. Carrying it around, like you're carrying a small bag, excuse me? No, no, that was hard. We had not told the kids, so the kids were thinking, mm, baby is still there. And yeah, I mean, you can see, still there. So, on Saturday morning, I woke up at 4.30, I told my husband, hospital, we are going. I can't take it anymore. And God is faithful. And uh, during that time, I remember that week, that week when I was carrying, I mean, I remember God giving this, this verse. I think it's Job chapter 2, verse 10, the last. Would I accept the good and not the bad? And I was like, hey, Jesus, the good and not the bad? Okay, just help me accept this because at the end of the day, you willed for it to happen. Mm. And I told God, I'm not going to ask you questions because you're God. I mean, I am not going to ask you questions. I'm not going to ask you, where were you? So I check in hospital on Saturday. They prep me up, da -da -da -da, thinking, hey, today's the day, today's the day. To hey, no, 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 it didn't happen. Now my service refused to open. They did everything humanly possible that they do. They gave me all the drugs that they give and nothing. I'm still at one centimeter. Oh, when I went to hospital on Saturday, at some point I was one centimeter. So I was thinking, 
uh, Saturday, Sunday morning at around 2 a.m. I was still at one centimeter. Then they put me the drugs, they did all those things, still prepping me up. Five hours, I'm still at two centimeters. I'm like, so the doctor had comforted me, rather lied to me that you don't have to get to 10 centimeters. Yes, you can just go up to six. It's a lie, it's a scam. You <laughs> go to 10. That is how God created it. Anyway, long and short of it, I gave birth on Sunday, 10.45 p.m. Yeah, to a dark blue black baby. What a sight. And uh, that's sad. That made me so sad. I looked at that child and I was like, apparently the hospital staff didn't, um, he told me I couldn't hold him. Yeah. He said that uh, it was gonna be too much emotionally. So I told him, turn him, I see. I want to see the growth and all, and he was there. So I checked. So since I'm not the one touching, I was like, hold his leg, I see. Hold his, you know. So I'm like, because immediately I gave birth, they covered him. And by the way, they had every right to, because um, eight days later, <laughs> black. Don't forget, uh, of course, the water that came out that Sunday morning was green. His child was... Later on, I learned the head of a baby collapses. And uh, then I looked at that boy and I said, he's still my son. As ugly as he looks. This is still my son. And by the time I was like, okay, just remove him. I think I had gotten to that place of, you know what, God, in everything, give thanks. And I give thanks for that boy. And we named him, we had named him Lodge, which in law means victorious. And I was like, yeah, it's amazing because when I was pregnant with this boy, there's this song I used to sing. Uh, I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on, let's walk in faith and victory. And I used to tell him, you're walking in faith and victory here. Yeah. These ones are saying, but they will see Jesus. You, you will be a prophet. And for sure he was a prophet. He didn't want to come here at Kulipalipa, Lonsa, China. <laughs> so, and, uh, and for me, that was it. I mean, I just looked at the child. I told God, amen. They removed him. And then I was told, of course, I had to wait for the placenta. I even wondered where it's coming from. Coming back home, empty. Let me say, leaving the hospital. Empty. I cried. I think that's why I cried all the tears that I had from. From this time I was told he's dead to now this. There's a lady I met when I went in there on Saturday and she was there because um, she was bleeding and she was at 34 weeks. And I remember telling her, praying for her and then she's like, oh, you're here to give birth. I'm like, oh yeah, to a dead baby. And she was shocked, you know. And she told me, I was here one year ago. My baby died, and now I'm here. I prayed for that lady, and I told her this one will live. These complications, you, they will stop in Jesus' name, and you will not be here at night. And for real, she wasn't there at night. They had transferred her. So I had the labor room to myself, to walk around and dance and do all that. Then there was also a lady who came in to bring in the daughter. In fact, her daughter, it's my doctor who gave, helped her give birth to the CS. So we came in the morning at the same time. So my doctor, I went to help her first before of course coming to check on me. And that lady was in shock because she could not believe. You see, by the time I was going to hospital, like I said, when Jesus carries you, honestly, you have nothing to worry about. So I was not in this state of, oh, uh, na, 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 na. In fact, if anything, I was calm, 
school and collected as I went through the labor. <laughs> and it is not me. It is the grace of God. It is, it is when God decided, Frida, because if God hadn't carried me, I would not be here giving this story because I was, I was going to die. I always tell people, losing a child is a, it, it's so painful that you cannot even go and tell that mother, oh, I know how you're feeling. No, 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 no. Even me, who knows how it feels. It's another pain you cannot. The best thing you can do to that person is just either hold them, hug them, keep quiet, pray for them. Because it, 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 it's a pain that can make you go nuts. And I knew Lord, the, God, the Lord had helped me. And this lady would come to my room after seeing the daughter. And she'd look at me and she'd go back and cry. And then she comes. She's like, you, you look so calm. It's like, I'm like, it's Jesus. She told me one thing I'll never forget. I want to know this Jesus. Know this Jesus who is making you feel composed. That's the Jesus I want to know. And I was like, he is real. He's real. What am I saying? It's at times during our pain that Jesus becomes real. Because he carried, he carried, he carried me. He carried me. But don't forget there is the aftermath. You have given up, you have gone home. You are alone with your thoughts. I remembered what the Bible says, yes, grief, but not like the hidden. Do you know how it feels? And he said, yes, I know. I know how it feels. I gave out my only son to die on the cross, so I know. And I was like, okay. Okay. Come it hurts. It's like, I know. And he was there. He wiped my tears. I would talk. I started um, doing recordings of just myself talking and removing and talking to God. Mm -hmm. Now, February 8th was when I was to give birth. I crashed. Mm. I crashed. I, I could not believe that the day is here. It's the day I was looking forward to. And I was not going to hold a pink baby. That was painful. That, that was painful. But he also reminded me I was there then. I am here now. You know? And uh, going back to church, I said I'm going to take a while because um, there were some ladies who were pregnant with. Mm. But do you know, I went back to church almost immediately. And the reason I did that was if I had not done that, I would not have come to church. Yeah. I would not have come to church. And uh, I had to trust that this God, this God who says he's the creator of the universe, imagine he'll take care of me. My kids were crushed. My kids were crushed. And uh, like the, my second bomb, it took a while. It took so many months because she'd just wake up and she'd remember and she's like, Mom, how come we never went for the burial? How come we never buried Lodge? How come we never saw him? You know, and uh, I had to. So I had to remind her, I don't know. I couldn't bury him. That was another hard thing. Mm. You no, know, that day when we were leaving the hospital, once you tell the state to bury, you still have to sign the mortuary papers. My husband was like, I can't. I'm like, you will do it. Because now me there, I cannot. And he refused to see him. So it was so hard putting your signature and saying, bury my child. You know? Ah, no, 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 no. That is tough. That is tough right there. But uh, the Lord, I've come to know this Christ because immediately after that, I saw Jesus in a new light. 
Honestly, my life changed. Complete. In fact, it did a 360 turn. And um, he kept on reminding me I'm a God of promises and I'm a promise keeper, mm. you know. And I had to trust. I remember immediately after that, I had to walk with this woman who had lost her child at childbirth. And it was more or less negligence. It was just a month after I had gone through this experience. And I remember we went to saw her and, you know, I look at women who've lost babies inside my heart. Like the other day, I, I saw size 8 story. It crushed me. And I was still praying for her. Because I know, I know there's another pain you cannot even share with your spouse. It's a pain I think it's only God who can truly understand. So I have a heart for such women because when I look at them, I say, I know, Woo, you know. I know how you feel like, you know, at times you feel, you know what, God, ground open up and swallow me, let me go. And maybe you forget you have other children or, you know. And then, of course, you get to hear all this. Oh, Vizuri, Kona Wengine, each child, each special. child is special. And I can never replace Lord. I can never replace my son. He was a, an identity on his own. So I cannot say, Watch an empty queer, and now I get another. Na, 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 na. If God gives me another one, that is another child. child you know. So even this one, oh, afadali ko uko na wingine. No, 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 no. See, afadali. No, no one would want. No one, no one gets pregnant knowing ah, aga katakufa. No, no. It's even, it's even hurting for people who even give birth and their children die. Now you even wonder which one is better. Uyu ame muona, ame mshika, alafu wakufe. Ama you, you, didn't even, you don't even have the chance to hold this child you're looking. You know, none is... Loss is loss. A loss is a loss. A loss is, and, and it's my prayer that um, we'd be sensitive. I'm, 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 I'm very sensitive around such people because I know. I, I know how it is. I know... Very few people understand. And then, of course, after a while, their lives go on, but you carry these things. Mm. It's, it's, it's going to be two years. This December, it's something I'll never forget. Every December 5th, I'll be remembering I gave birth to this child. Because I gave birth. I gave birth. Yeah. So, after that, God gave me the first stealing job. And he told me, I will restore you. I will restore you. And I was actually, yesterday I was listening to another someone and this lady was saying, after you've gone through a traumatic, it's good to ask God to restore your soul. So I remembered then, in 2020, he told me, I'll restore you. And here I am. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, there's something that Frida has shared that just... Um, that has really spoken to me when you've said, you know, that that God understands our pain. He mm -hmm. understands our loss because mm -hmm. he too lost. Yeah. He too had to give up his son. Yeah. Not to people who are appreciative of the sacrifice. It costs something. Mm -hmm. And and so really we don't have an excuse to walk away. No. And I think sometimes no. God looks at us and says, you know, where are you running to? You shouldn't run yeah. to, you should come towards. Exactly. Because I feel you. Yes. I feel you. And I am able mm -hmm. to restore. And the reality is that we won't always understand why bad things happen to mm. good people, why we go through pain. All we know is that, like Christ said, in this world you will know tribulation. Yeah. But be ye of good cheer. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Be ye of good cheer. Why? Mm. Because I, I have, have overcome, overcome the world. And so I pray that this story will be an encouragement. Yes, it's you my know, prayer. That it will be an encouragement mm. to somebody who is watching us to know mm. that God is able to restore, God is able to hold, God mm -hmm. is able to keep. And He understands. He understands when we struggle, when we hurt, when we ask questions. And he doesn't want us to pretend. It's not yeah. about acting like no. we don't have questions. No. It's about saying, you know, this is where I am. Mm. This is my reality. Hold me. Mm. And he's faithful to mm. hold us. So God mm. bless you and have a wonderful week. Thanks, Frida. Mm.